All right, guys, finally getting back to a little bit of boat content. We have our 42-foot yellowfin behind me. We're going to be talking about the difference between these Yamahas and the new engines that I'm about to show you, which I'm super stoked about. It's a completely different brand than the Yamahas and what I think are probably the best engines on the market right now, and that's why I chose to do this engine swap. And I'll tell you what, these Yama dogs, they're getting tired, all right? They've probably got about 1,200 hours, which I would equivalent to about 120,000 miles. These are the Yamaha 350s. It's kind of hard to see with the camera, but you get to see the sheer size of this boat. I designed this wrap at Project Prime. It's kind of got a ghosted flag. The boat's name is Finn and Tonic. And then we did a little bit of a touch here with the Yellowfin logo, my logo, the Freedom Factory, and the Cleater logo. The amount of space in these boats is incredible, and we use it a lot for family, fishing, cruising around, sandbars, you know, just taking people out. It's, it's just the best boat possible for where we live at, which is on the west coast of Florida. Right now, here's the dash. We have Simrad Electronics, and uh, you know, we're going to be removing the throttles, as well as this display here. So in this video, we have to decide where we're going to remount the new screen for the new engines. Finally, the engine reveal. We are gonna be switching out the three Yamaha 350s for three Mercury Verado V10 naturally aspirated 400 horsepower engines. The reason why I chose to make this move is because these newer engines, unlike the 2017s, which are seven years old now, are gonna be more fuel efficient, they're lighter, they're able to transfer the power more efficiently to the prop and therefore the water. So we're probably going to gain some performance as well. These Yamahas are known for having their problems. They're heavy. They've gotten the job done this far, but I'm just, I'm just a Mercury Verado guy at heart. So we're gonna unbox one of these things so you can see the absolute beauty behind these engines. So uh, as you can see, they're sitting here. They're, there's three engines. I'm gonna cut into this. We can see how sick this thing is. You ready for that? I just love the white. Don't you guys love the white? I mean, that's gonna look freaking beautiful on the back of this boat with the white engines instead of the, the gray Yamahas. I mean, these things are a lot bigger in person, aren't they? Like when you're laying in a crate, I mean, if I lay down next to this thing, they're like, what, they're probably seven feet long or seven feet tall, don't you think? Oh, are these, these are the new Verados on this boat, aren't they? I'm gonna pan to that. Those are the 500 R. So these definitely are gonna have 100 more horsepower and probably a little bit more better time managing torque and power. But we're, we're really not going for speed with this boat. This again, this is kind of a leisure boat that we use it for. We're going to sandbars, for going fishing. You know, 100 miles offshore. You know, just kind of putzing around the intercoastal. She's pretty much built to do it all. Like if we really wanted to make a trip, like from Florida to Texas, I mean. You could do that in this boat if you brought fuel bladders. And so, I don't know. We'll definitely be able to have pretty much no limits once we get these new engines on here, which I'm super stoked about. So we're up here at Pro Marine in St. Petersburg, Florida. We're here with Kyle and John, and these guys are kind of the masterminds behind this project. So I'm gonna put them on. They can kind of tell you about what they do. All right, guys, this is John. He's kind of the mastermind behind uh, putting this on and he's got an absolutely dialed in toolbox dude you do these projects quite often don't you oh yeah i, I stay busy uh all the time now if you have a boat what engines would you put on it would oh. you go with the yamahas or would you go with the Verado? hands down mercury i'm a big racing guy i come from performance uh, do you? over okay. 20 years uh building performance bikes uh got into boats uh, a while back and just love it so you think this is a good move oh yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah I mean, with the amount of hours that are on this boat and the weight that it's pushing, is it kind of capped where it's at as far as performance and efficiency goes? Uh, yeah, these are a lot heavier. Um, once you step up to the V10s, you get a bigger gear case, uh, which they introduce on the new V10s. Uh, it's going to get a lot more torque out of the hole and get you up on plane. So even though these are V8s currently on the boat, the V10s actually weigh less. Is that correct? Uh, yes. So we're going to be end up with a lighter engine on the back of the boat. You know, so if you have a lighter boat and you have more power, you're going to be able to accelerate and get a faster top end out of it, depending on which prop you're using. Well, there you go. Is this our prop? Here's your prop. Look at the diameter of that thing, how big it is. Oh, you dude. And it's four-bladed. 
Yeah. Right, because so we're going is, from three blades to four. This was the inline six Mercury four blade prop. Okay. Look at the diameter difference. That's how you're getting your efficiency. It's just you're moving more. I mean, that's got to be like at least two to three inches larger, right? Yeah. Yeah. And three blade to four blade, which I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of this and that over which one to go with, but. You have a lot of throttle response to the point the boat's almost gonna feel like it has brakes when you pull off the throttle. It'll slow the boat as really? well. Really? Yeah, it's gonna be pretty neat. Okay. I mean, unlike obviously in your car, boats do not have brakes. So the only way to slow the boat down is to reduce throttle back to idle. I mean, you don't wanna slam it into reverse while you're moving forward. That can be very hard on the transmission of the gearbox, but uh, this four bladed prop will be a big move on these V10s. All right, I want to introduce Kyle. He's kind of the, uh, how would you describe it? Um, we're just working here at Pro Marine. <laughs> we're all working together, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I I'm technically the service manager, service writer, but I help JP. We got to get in there, we get in there, we just make it happen, that's what we do. Heck yeah, man. Well, I'm excited for this. Kyle and I are gonna go over right now. We're gonna get inside the boat and we're gonna kind of decide where we're gonna lay things out as far as the throttles go. And then the, what's the unit called? The display for the, where the vessel view, which vessel is view that's right. Package. Yep. We're gonna move a few things around on the dash. Okay. Um, obviously what you prefer, where you move things. We're gonna get rid of the Yamaha gauge and make some space so everything's user friendly for you. Cool, let's climb up there and start uh, picking away at that. Yeah. We're gonna have to upgrade fuel lines. They're gonna have to go half inch from the tank all the way back, so all new fuel lines, which is bigger valves, filter heads, all that. What's in there now, 3 8 3 8 we're Three. gonna have to go up to half inch. And do you use AM lines, or is it just like the rubberized lines? It's gonna be or? a rubberized hose, and then just a regular barb, Okay. what we call like an odor clamp, like a one-time oh. use clamp. Okay, okay, yep. cool. So that's why you've got all the Fuel all tanks open. exposed, yep. all the hatches are open because yep. we're going to be pulling out all these filters, all the lines, and going to some more beef dogger type fuel lines. Yep. Bigger lines, more fuel. Is it going to burn more fuel though? Because it's probably more fuel efficient with these engines. Is it or about well, the same? Technically, by weight, you would be burning more fuel because there's more cylinders, but you will be going further per gallon, if that makes sense. So your efficiency will be better. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. There's a couple things about this dash that when we bought the boat, you know, it's all, it was already done. So we didn't really get to lay things out where we want to, but now is kind of the time where we get to pick where we're gonna move a couple things around. So let's go over what's gonna be removed and then I'll show you what's gonna be going in. On the dash, we have two Simrad touch screens. Uh, the previous screens that were in here were controlled by this remote unit and now they are touch screen, but this is gonna actually stay this is autopilot. This is FLIR for a night vision camera that's on top of the boat. This is the vessel view for the Yamaha engine. So this is like your tachometer, your fuel gauge, basically all of the data or check engine lights that come on go through this screen. Your fusion controller for your sound and then throttles and trim tabs and then your anchor control here. So the throttles are for the Yamaha. So these are gonna get removed and this vessel view for where the Yamaha is gonna get removed. So we gotta figure out where we're gonna put this stuff. So you got the your templates? vessel view, yep, it's gonna be a nine inch, gonna go Ooh. larger. Yeah, it is. But that's also gonna cause issues, where does it go? Where does so, it go? Thinking over here, maybe. There. So this is actual size of the unit. That's actual template. So if you wanna move something, now is the time. You plan on trying to leave as much as this here as possible, but either way, you're doing fiberglass repair. Well, that's ultimately up to you. You have two options there. You can, if you wanna move something, now's the time. You can patch whatever holes needed by fiberglass. We can blend them, patch them, or you can put a plate across the whole dash if you want to move anything. I thought about that. We I could do that, that and do an acrylic plate. Definitely one of the things we need to eliminate is this clip here okay. for the push to talk. Um, I don't know, man. Throttles definitely need to stay on the right side. Yeah, it'd be a direct replacement right there. Direct replacement right here. The only problem with putting it down here is if somebody's knee hits it because it's it. touch screen and you're not going to see it and trying to look at this. Well, I guess what we could do is probably move this FLIR over to here and then slide this up right there. Absolutely do that. And that would keep it pretty simple and clean as long as we lined up this line here with yep. this vessel view line here yep. like that. that. FLIR over enough. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Cool. That's the simplest. I think so too. Also too, your Yamaha keys down in the bottom with your start stop buttons down by your knees. Yeah, well, how do you um, feel about that? I don't care for it. Right. I don't believe JP cares for it. Do you like having either. them up here? I like having the keys in the dash and just start stop buttons. Yeah, I agree. Your I agree. new control is gonna have an all start button on it. 
So, so you can start and stop the boat there. You just have power on in the console. I like the keys in the console, and I like the push to start underneath here. Okay. Is that doable? We can do that. Or is that a pain There's in the butt? There's also a push to start on the control. Do you want a second one down there? No. Then just leave the one on the control, which put the kill lanyard or the safety lanyard down in there. Okay. Can you do a kill lanyard delete? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's illegal. You definitely can't do that. That's definitely illegal. Definitely so, illegal. So we'll end up plugging all the keyholes down here somehow, right? Or just patch or closing yeah, so this up we'll somehow. Is, is we might just plate those. Plate you know those. What, I mean? we're, what we'll do is we're putting something else back in there so we can make a JP can make a acrylic plate that'll cover that. Yeah. He'll put the safety lanyard, kill lanyard. Okay. And we can also put a diagnostic port in there so you don't have to rip apart all the shower stuff to plug into the boat and check ah, it. Ah, I like that. I like that. Okay, so we'll eliminate this bracket, move the fleer over, put the vessel view here, move keys in the console, and then the throttles will have the, same, the same. push to start. Yep. Same, same. So then the only thing is the Yamaha gauge will come out of the hole. Do you want that just glass back flat or do you have something you want to put in there? I think just glass, just flat, okay. close it up. Instead of fixing the fiberglass, we might be doing an acrylic panel over the fiberglass. That way we can change the color because trying to match the paint on the new gel coat fiberglass work that'll be over to the top of seven year old gel coat is probably gonna be pretty difficult with coloring and tinting. So I'm gonna jump up in this, what is this, a Nortec? No, it's a Yellowfin. And it's yellow it's yellow fin. behind the screens. Yeah. And then the base of the, deck, the actual console is a dark color. Oh, they painted the whole console. You pointed out these 500 R's. Now we don't have the R, we just had the regular 400s. Can you tell us like a little bit of a difference, what the difference is like a 400 and a 400 R or 400 R's? So the 400 R is gonna have a smaller diameter gear case. Essentially it was the gear case off the previous 450. It's not gonna be able to run that larger diameter prop. That's gonna give you your efficiency with the 400. Also being a race motor, obviously a little more maintenance, but also higher RPMs. Higher RPM. Is it like a couple hundred RPM? Two. So it's a it's a tune thing, right? In a yep. different gearbox. Yep. Okay. The non-R motors make more sense for what we're doing. If we were like in a Nortec or like a Midnight Express or something with a little bit more sleeker of a hole, you know, an R motor would probably be more applicable. And I really shouldn't just say Nortec and Midnight Express. I also say like CV or Invincible. Some boats that are a little bit lighter and have a, a more narrow beam on them than the Yellowfin. But the Yellowfin's perfect for our family. We've had a couple of them, and it's it's literally perfect to go offshore fishing or go to the sandbar or take it to dinner or, you know, just putz around the intercoastal. I mean, it's pretty much the do-it-all boat for the west coast of Florida. Okay, so I'm going to be sharing a little bit more about this build process, and obviously when we take delivery of it, I'm going to be taking you off for a rip on it. We're going to be doing some speed tests, some noise checks, you know, just really using this boat for its potential and having fun with it with our family and friends. Jeff, brother, what are we doing here today, dog? Um, we're gonna put some tubular style door bars on this thing. <laughs> really make this thing look like an off-roading monster. Yo, the people have been asking, they're like, you gotta do door bars. So Jeff is my boy, he's a fabricator here in Sarasota, and he's like, I got you, dog. Yeah. So we are gonna what, build, I mean, I kinda sent you a picture, I'll insert it here, yeah. but uh, I'm kinda gonna let you use your creative freedom to do what you want with it. Um, you know, we're gonna kind of do some styling with, you know, some tubes and you're even gonna put a latch yeah, on there, Yeah, there's right? gonna be some crossbars. We're gonna have a latch assembly, so it's gonna lock on the locker and everything and just push it, kick the door open, be able to access in and out easily. And we don't have to worry about you falling out this thing because <laughs> we went pretty hard last weekend. So we yeah, wanna get some fun. door bars on here and, and make it a little safer. Where can they find you at? Uh, it's Superformance Fab on Instagram, Facebook, and you can check out my work there. Yeah. Like I said we're, we're in I'll the put Sarasota a link in the I'll area. put in the link in the description of where you guys can contact Jeff if you need any fabrication work for whatever your needs yeah. are right Street I mean car drag car anything exotics he's uh, a chassis work dude, you actually did an exhaust for a Koenigsegg yeah I mean you do exhaust for McLaren's yep. he's yeah uh, he did Crispy's build on his Infinity his LS swapped Infinity on Super Dr. Pepper I did all Dr. the Dr. Pepper yep, work yep yep work in there so I'm leaving this beautiful piece of art with you <laughs> I love it. I love the light bar. This thing is sick, dude. Just don't look at the wiring. It's a little cringe. That's but. all right. Wiring can get a little hairy in places. But.
Well, she's all yours to uh, have some fun with. Jeff, what are you using for material on this build? We got 40 feet of inch and 5 eighths, 4130 chromoly tube. So Shoo. yeah, they'll be real lightweight and super strong. So we'll get this stuff bent up Where's for you. Where's those latches? I want to see those latches yeah. you got. It'd oh, that's pretty latches. slick. Yeah, so they have a, a mounting pad that they'll go to. This one's for the other side, but they'll go in right like that. And, and then just some kind of boom. pull cable. Oh, we could reach back or huh? some kind of pull cable on it or something. I yeah, it's upside down, so it'll be... This one's for the other side, and I'll put a little handle on there so you'll actually Oh, there have, you go. Yeah, yeah. Sick. Yep. And I'll probably send them off the powder coat. Yeah, buddy. So nice. we'll get them taken care of, man. Thanks, man. I'll see you later. All right, later. All right, guys, I want to shout out these boys that have been helping me out with this trailer. I hit them up on Facebook because I thought they had this trailer for sale, and they're like, no, we actually rent it. And so I got to shout them out because it's two young guys that are trying to make it and start an equipment rental company. So this is Declan. He up, rents guys? out this trailer for 100 bucks a day or 120 on the weekends. Yeah, so if you're in the Sarasota area, they can hit you guys up. I'll put some info in the description below. And yeah. Got to respect the hustle, yeah. man. So I appreciate, we appreciate your help. it, man. We always yeah. appreciate the positive feedback. Yeah. We, uh, we're starting out with this trailer. We're looking to get a dump trailer soon. And uh, by the end of the month, we're looking to get that dump trailer. I'll put a link in the description below of where you can contact them from their website. But yeah, pretty sick setup, guys. 100 bucks a day to rent this trailer. And they're getting a dump trailer soon. So support local. Help these guys out to grow their business. If you guys like this content, I got to say, I really appreciate you guys getting me to 100K subs this week. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe, like, leave me a comment, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have you ever found yourself in a situation where you've been wrenching on your car, need a 10 millimeter wrench, plowing a bag of flaming hot Cheetos and drinking a Dr. Pepper and realize, dang it, I really need to brush my teeth? Well, now's your chance. I'm talking Dr. Parker 10 millimeter tool brush, a toothbrush on one end, a 10 millimeter wrench on the other. This sucker, CNC billet aluminum, baby. Lifetime warranty. Get them now at CletusMcFarland.com.